thank you so much for um, being here today. We have a pretty good program um, for you um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think you know we're gonna learn together today. We're gonna have a, a lot of dialogue and hopefully that will contribute to all of us being involved in upcoming opportunities in construction. Um, what I wanted to do before we begin is, um, besides saying thank you so much for coming, and I'd like for you guys before we begin to put your hands together um, to thank Mr. Miller for taking the time out to um, come here so we can um, have a real dialogue, so thank you. I said thank my mother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, because we, we have very limited time, I just wanna go through some quick um, house cleaning. Uh, make sure that you all left your business card in the bowl because we'll do a raffle. The raffle is going to be um, a champagne, the vest, and a 50% off of vase membership, um, whether um, it's a renewal or um, new um, registration. Also, um, after the program, you know, we're gonna try to stick to the timeline. You can network here. However, when the program is over, um, watch the time about 8.15. If you guys can um, please um, go out for the simple fact that we have the room reserved till about 8, 8.15. Um, without, with that being said, because of the nature of the conversation today, I think it'll be nice to sort of go around the room and get an idea of um, who all of you guys are. So if you don't mind, we're just gonna go around. We only have one mic, so what I would do is once you say who you are, I would just repeat it so that um, we can all hear, hear it. So if we can start from here, Clement. Sure, thank you, Kinsley. For the sake of time, if you can please limit it to your name, your company name, what you do, that would be great, thank you. Clementine Johnson, have the icing cupcakes. I do cakes and custom cakes, and cupcakes. Uh, uh, Greg Oliver, Orange Cleaning Services, Commercial and Residential Cleaning, uh, New Haven, Fairfield, and Westchester Counties. John Campbell, Middletown uh, Wind Supply, uh, Solution Provider. Uh, John Soretta, I'm a, a construction estimator uh, as well as a real estate agent for Berkshire Hathaway. Claudette Deer, CDs Cleaning. Todd Howell, New England Site and Infrastructure Management. We do organic recycling, construction projects, excavation, site work, and snow plowing. Jasmine Richards, public adjuster with all types claims. Adjuster is my own company. I negotiate insurance claims for properties on behalf of the public, similar to us that are in here. I negotiate with insurance companies for a fair settlement. Thanks. Kamar Deer, I help small businesses with branding and marketing online. My name is Ed Randall. I'm owner of Randall's Professional Transportation, chauffeuring people from airports, casinos, proms, weddings, or not in the town. Tom McMillan, Director of Minority Business Association in the Center for Joint Ventures. Karina Ball, uh, Smart Seed. I do uh, marketing and web marketing for small and medium businesses. Lat Latanya Irby, um, staffing business, Zion Enterprises, and resident owned business, uh, New Haven, Connecticut. My name is Kaz, here with my partner, Sibel. Uh, our company name is Retech LLC, it's a general construction company. Jay Politis, Total Energy Connections. We're an energy services company providing LED lighting, fuel cells, uh, everything within the utility programs for both Eversource and UI. Uh, I'm Eric Higathi. I help um, the VACE team put together this event. Um, Matt Calori, uh just started this week um, in the sales department. Uh, Jim Bartley, Vase Construction. I work with Matt uh, for V to make sure that uh, you all uh, have someone to go to for the information resources that you need. Thank you. Tom, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> 
My name is Anthony Stewart. I'm with Ashlar Construction. We're the developer of the Newfield Library Project. If you didn't hear, you said developer of Newfield Library Project. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you for coming. So once again, thank you guys so much for taking the time out to come. I'm going to give you a summary of what we're going to be discussing today. Um, and we're going to go straight into the program. One of the things that I was speaking to Mr. Miller about recently is that, uh, let's look at New Haven alone. New Haven alone, I won't be exaggerating when I say there is not millions, billions of work coming up. You know, between the housing, the city, Yale, there is billions of opportunities coming up in New Haven. The question is, how do all of us become a part of it? I mean, all of us are working now. You know, we do some tiny work in New Haven. How do we do more? I'm sure some of you guys do work in New Haven. How do you do more? How do we work together? How do we ensure that all of us can be a part? For many years, we, you know, we meet, we discuss, and yes, sometimes we do work in business together, but at the rate of things, it's going to take a very long time before we get to the, um, the, the, before we get to be a major contractor, like many of the major contractors that we have. So the question is, with all of the opportunities coming up in New Haven, in the Fairfield County, in the state, how do we want to position ourselves to be a part of it? How do we work together? How do we make sure that we are competitive with advantage? How do we get the resources to get it done? Quite honestly, I don't know what the answer is. And you know, I spoke to Mr. Miller briefly um, before we started, and we've been having an ongoing conversation. We don't know what the answer is. We know that projects comes up and projects get done, um, irregardless. But how do we get more participation? That is one of the main reasons um, for this particular meeting. Um, I just wanted to um, touch base on just in general. Now, VACE, we have the website that lists upcoming opportunities in the state and even outside of the state. And what I've noticed is that recently there is so much work opportunities, meaning construction work opportunities, that are posted on the website. Even I can't keep up with it. There's so much opportunities. Who's doing this work and how are they getting it done? And what are we doing right or what are we doing wrong and how can we get involved? That's part of what we're gonna be discussing. Um, I just gave you guys a little teaser of just some of the bits that I pull up and it's all in your, if you have your registration form, it's in there. It's a diverse of um, bits that we're posting on the website that just pulled out today just so we can go over it. But there is these opportunities and there's so much more. And I've noticed that it's not just here in Connecticut, it's in the surrounding areas, in the Massachusetts, in New York, in the Rhode Island. So again, the question becomes how do we position ourselves to get some of this upcoming work? Before we begin the dialogue, I would like for Mr. Miller to talk to you about specific projects that he's working on or that he's um, involved in so let's start, let's start there <laughs> um, and see how we can expand from there. So I will give Mr. Miller the, the mic to discuss some of the opportunities that he has coming up. I thought we weren't going to, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we weren't going to do that. But in any case, um, I'm not sure how well that works. Uh, but as of now, I'm working with the New Haven Housing Authority and uh, it's converting most of its public housing to project-based assistance. So it's going to be about $150 million worth of uh, construction work starting in January. So we have our first um, construction manager, which is a minority firm, which is uh, uh, Tricon. And next week, we're going to choose our second construction manager and probably third one. So there'll probably be five construction managers uh, by the end of next week. So. Uh, and this work is ranging from new construction uh, at Valley Town Houses to uh, renovation uh, at Captain Harvey. So work is from $600,000 all the way up to $25 million. And it includes everything from cleaning the apartments to, rent, to uh, energy conservation to every single aspect. So, and uh, I've had conversation with contractors and I've had conversation with base about how to make sure that everyone can participate. And I sort of feel like a sort of deja vu. I feel like I'm not making any progress. I've held the same conversation 
year after year. And there have been a few of you I've met with in, uh, over the years. So I guess my thing tonight is just to figure out, as one individual and two individuals, what can I do as one individual to help uh, people in this room here get work if you need it. And I'm not sure everybody in this room needs work, but I worked with a young lady here one time and spent two hours with her getting her her check. And when the contractor said he wasn't going to pay her, <laughs> I informed him that if he didn't pay her $25,000, he wasn't going to get his $30 million. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> I also informed him that if he didn't bring her her, her check by the end of the meeting, that I was going to terminate his contract. That worked out pretty well too, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, and uh, I spent, I think, two hours with the young man here in a car one day, <laughs> driving all over Westchester County, lost like hell, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I learned parts of Westchester County I never knew before, right? <laughs> so I, I guess the question is, as one individual, uh, we have this contract that's coming up, and I guess the question is, I just need to know as one person, <laughs> what can I do to help facilitate the connection? Uh, workshops, one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, uh, the power I, that we do have is that we don't have to sign their contracts until they comply, right? <laughs> so that's the power that I have, So and it's the power that I intend to use because uh, that's probably the only reason that I am here to, to do that work. And I assume I'm here to do that work because I was put here to do that work. So that is my, that is my work, so, and that's what I'm here to do. So I need to know what I can do individually to help each one of you uh, if you need my help to get that, some of that work. It's probably as simple as that. So whatever it is, one-on-one -on -one conversation, one-on-one -on -one meeting with the contractor, that's what I am here to listen to and to learn. I, I talk too much already. Great. Um, another thing that we wanted to try differently is normally when we have these meetings, we talk, you know, we talk a lot. So I thought we'll change it up. Now, now some of you guys here are subcontractors, some of you guys here are major contractors or general contractors, and some of you guys here are um, agencies and service providers. If you can raise your hands and you know, without going in too much details, you know, just sort of let us know what are some of the major obstacles that you face um, in terms of being a part of these programs. Maybe we can kick the dialogue out in that respect. Now, mind you, when you are expressing some of the concerns that you may have, um, remember that we are trying to focus on specific opportunities in New Haven, as you know, Mr. Miller said. There is the there's the ride coming up. You know, there is um, Farnham Court. There's opportunities in New Haven try to sort of have your concerns around that area so we can see how we can specifically help you. Um, you know, there's also opportunities coming up with the city of Milford. So with that respect, let's do it that way. Not, don't try to, I mean, I know there's so much issues and concerns with construction all over the place. Let's try to stay focused and let's try to address it in such a way that we can solve it because we can't solve all of the vague problems. We can only be very specific. So if you have specific concerns or issues that you think you can address it and we, we can help in that respect, as he mentioned. Um, you know, the Housing Authority, and I've worked with the New Haven Housing Authority for about 10 years now. I know that they are very, um, they're very serious when it comes to helping local um, businesses, um, small businesses, minority-owned businesses to get opportunities to participate in their projects. So let's do it that way. Is anyone that wants to, okay, there we go. Can you hold on one second, Kaz? We are looking for work, of course, always. And you mentioned uh, there is a limit of 600,000 up to 25 million. We can handle right now about three to 400,000. That's our problem. So we cannot directly uh, apply to those jobs that are coming up. Uh, is it, is it uh, our, our next best thing? Is it to uh, deal with the deal with the uh, contractors who do get the job and sub out for them? Uh, we're going to have construction managers, and there are going to be five of them, and one has been chosen, and it is a, a small minority contractor. One was chosen yesterday, so that's two, and then the others will be chosen probably next week. So 
they're going to be the construction managers. And so the first thing we're trying to do is, is to make them, and I used to work mate very strongly because they're not going to do this voluntarily, make them reach out and form partnerships. Because what we said is that it's not just enough for them to hire subs because when they finish, the sub is still a sub. And so that doesn't empower any community, that doesn't transfer any wealth. So what I really want them to do is start to mentor small businesses so that when we finish this process, we have the same contractors over and over and over again. It's the same five that I had when I left here three years ago. And I come back and it's the same five now. So I am pissed off at that because we spent like a half a billion dollars over the last decade in the same five contractors. So that's a failure. I've told a contractor I, that's a failure on my part. It's a failure on the housing authority's part. It's a failure on their part. So the work, the contracts are $600,000 to $25 million per project. But I don't expect for you to be the contractor. What I expect for you to do is to be uh, either work for one of the subs, because each one of these jobs is going to have between 10 and 12 subs, right? So either be a sub or work for a sub. That's the work you will be able to do. The contractors have already been chosen, the, right? And one of them is a minority firm, and one has a minority partner. The other ones are dragging their feet and really don't want to do anything. So that's the, that's the battle. But uh, what kind of work are you, are you looking to do? You're in general construction. I don't, I don't, general to me is like miscellaneous. I'm not sure what that means. What does general mean? What? We do everything. Uh, we don't like to do roofings or concrete. But everything else we do. Okay, everything else you do. But your specialty, because I can't go to a contract and say, you do everything because uh, framing. framing, okay. Okay, so there's probably very little framing on most of these jobs uh, except for Valley, which is gonna be new construction. Uh, all the others are rehabs. There's some vinyl work. There's some hardy plank work. A lot of flooring, a lot of kitchen, a lot of cabinets, uh, but not a lot of framing. A whole lot of roofing. All the properties have poor roofs. What about painting? I was going to use my language, but I can't use my language because last time I used my language, they taped me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all over the website. <laughs> so I'm just going to say there's an S load of painting. <laughs> and they also taped me with a drink in my mouth as well, but I had to edit out. So, yes, every, there are 762 apartments. Every one of them is going to be painted, seriously. The first job starts in January. It has 144 units. They're all going to be painted. There's a minority contractor uh, for the first job, and I sent contractors over to see them, uh, and, uh, and I will do that for you as well. And how do we get in contact with those? I will hook you up with the contractor, same as I've done for other contractors already. But when you go over there, it's on, on you. I can't make them hire you because that would be illegal, but I can make the connection. But there is painting in every single solitary apartment, and they don't have a painter. And even if they did, they would need a S load of painters. <laughs> so uh, if you if you if you if you do two things, if you give me your phone number and your specialty, I will hook you up as I did before with him, with the contractor, and he went to see the contractor, and then you and that's what you will do. So the marriage is what I can make. It's a shotgun marriage, I can make that too. But uh, yeah, a lot of painting. Painting is probably the number one thing we're gonna be doing. Flooring is number two, kitchen cabinets is number three. Okay? Yeah. All right, so you can floor the, and you can paint the, out of the. <laughs> so that I can do, I will have the contractor call you, uh, and you. they will typically call you if I tell them to call you, because. Right? <laughs> so that's pretty easy. But it's on you once you talk to them. So, all right, so that's one marriage we can make. Uh, a lot of painting. Yes, ma'am. How do we get to you? How do we find you? Where do we find you? Uh, well, oh. you can do, you know, you can go, like Batman, you can go up on top, you can shine a light, I'll come to you. <laughs> um, I will give you my phone number, like I do most people, like I did him and him, and you would just call me and, uh, I will call you back. I'm pretty accessible. Uh, uh, most people know that, right? I will call you back. Uh, I will call everybody back. I once gave all 2,000 residents at the Howling Authority my phone number. 
I did. They were calling me on Christmas. They were calling me. I didn't. It's the same number. Ten years later, yes, right? They called me on Christmas Day, said that's my apartment is flooding. I was like, they really did. True story. But I will give you my number. You will call me. Simple as that. And I will get a contract to your number, and they will call you. If they don't call you, you will call me back, and then I will call them, and they don't want to hear from me. It works that way, right? So uh, I'll give you my number. He has my number. He can give it to you. Yeah. See? Mentioned you need to get four rows. You need a roofer. Uh, yes. I have one of the, my partnerships who actually because I'm doing a project, and I need we're to doing. Uh, she knows because we've been working with. Uh, we're doing um, two um, e uh, flat roofs, EPDM, and uh, right, and and we're putting uh, solar panels on top of two of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have the solar contractors already, uh, uh, two of them, and they gave us the bids already. But we don't have we don't have the roofers, but two roofers, two two yeah. and two other roofers. So yes, first yeah there. You can call V. Uh, you can call me. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to touch base. One of the things that we're going to be um, and we've already started doing it. Some of you may have been receiving it on our, if you're on our mailing list, specifically on the on the VASE website, Bid Portal, we are sending out weekly notification of upcoming opportunities so you don't miss out. So make sure that you're on that portal so you can see um, all of the different um, work coming up, including the work that is coming up in New Haven. Okay. And I would call V because Friday is grandbaby number one day, and then Saturday is grandbaby number two day. So uh, they expect me to show up every Friday and Saturday Otherwise, they get peeved. So <laughs> I have to put that to my schedule. Now, one is four and one is three. But we have to do that thing, too. <laughs> so all right. So all right. But just I think Faye knows how to get me, get in contact with her. She knows she's always calling. She knows what contractors are. But yeah. yeah. You can't talk to me. Well, we don't allow the contractors to double bond, which just means that we they have a bond for the project, so we don't allow them to bond the small contractors. So we get one bond from them, and then I don't allow them to get bond from anyone else, except maybe for some of the mechanical jobs and the electrical jobs, they're tricky. But for painting and, and flooring and that, we don't allow them to get a bond. So typically, uh, it probably three years, we make everybody fill out this AIA form, which is an AIA uh, A305, yeah. you list your experience. Uh, the contractor is on the line, like the contractor we just talked about, he's on the line to do the work. They've already given me a price for the work. So they have to deliver the price, the work for that price. If they deliver it cheaper than that price, they get to keep all the Extra. money. It's a, it's a, right. So they're going to vet you uh, because they, it's their insurance and their workers' comp and their everything. So they're going to vet you. So I would say three years at a minimum, probably. Uh, yeah, so uh, you have to wait a little bit longer. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you, yeah. Because you can't mess around my floors and roofs, okay? <laughs> All right. Is there going to be a lot of asphalt concrete? Uh, every, you've seen our properties, you know that well as I do. All the properties have, have asphalt, repaving, concrete. Some cases we have to go out and eat them and put in new, uh, putting in fiber optics so we can put in, we're trying to give our residents wireless, not, I, don't, I keep saying my residents, I don't work there anymore. Trying to give that residents wireless communication. So yeah, so a lot of that work. I keep saying this is work that's every aspect of a project we're doing. It's it's from rehabbing to new construction. So it's every aspect. I keep saying that electrical, mechanical, roofs. We're even doing solar panels. We're doing everything except geothermal, and we thought about that. So when I say everything, I mean everything. Have you set a time limit? Uh, most of the contractors, uh, you know, that are on 30-day net. When they come in, the first thing we ask them is, uh, how are you going to facilitate your minority contractors and small contractors not going under? Most of them will advance you the money. They almost always do. Uh, for as as for resident-owned businesses and uh, second threes, the housing authority has. They still have the program. Yeah, they, they have. They have. 
resident owned business, they have a revolving loan program. They will advance you the money. But most contractors, we ask them two things. Uh, not, to, not to double bond, because we don't want you bonding over someone else. Uh, if they can get wraparound insurance for the whole project, we do that. And the most important thing is cash flow. We need to make sure that they pay you, and most of them will, will advance you the money. Or, or if they don't invest you the money, they will buy the supplies. But that's pretty standard. We, man, we demand that up front. Oh. I keep saying that we, I mean they, because I don't work for them, I'm a consultant. I keep forgetting that. Uh, just to kind of give you, and, and V knows me, as I said, I'm a construction estimator. So just to kind of give you a little bit of understanding as to how sometimes the process works, I probably have done work for probably nine to 10 minority contractors in New Haven, Springfield. And inevitably, it's the same thing over and over and over again. We will submit a bid, and then the question becomes, who won the job? And you try and find that information out, and unless you really establish a relationship with, with, with a contractor, you're never gonna find out. And that's the hard part. And when you constantly bid over and over and over, and as he was saying, you're bidding to the same contractors over and over, and you finally say to yourself, am I gonna get a fair shot here? Or are they just taking my number and using it? Okay, there are people that, w that I know that basically had a minority contractor number just to be able to use their number to say that they complied with the state regulation. And that's not fair, all right? But the bottom line is when you try to find out the information, you can't, it's a closed door. So all I can say to you is you have to keep bidding out there, you can't be afraid to give your numbers, and eventually you're just gonna hope that the door is going to open, okay? And the opportunity that you take upon yourself and you take on the work, you can do it and you make a name for yourself. And, and I'm a firm believer that once you make a name for yourself, you're there. It makes it very easy. Because then they come right back to you and they say, John, what can you do for this job? I've got six guys, okay, fine, give me a number. And you give them a number and they say, okay, we're gonna send you out the contract. That's the way it works. But trust me, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, and they try to keep the information very, very close to the vest. They don't like to give out the information. So just a little bit of insight. Uh, that to, to, I think that all goes back to the commitment of the entity that you're dealing with. And I've been in a lot of entities. I've been in, in I'm not going to call a name, but I've been in a lot of housing authorities, as most of you know. And uh, some of them just aren't committed to this uh, at all. And they pay lip service. The contractors aren't going to do this necessarily unless, they, unless they're I don't want to use the word force. Um, I can come up with a better verb later. Encourage, Encourage yes, to do this. <laughs> so I think the key is that uh, I am committed to doing this, and most of you know I am. The issue is that with the CMs, we've already, they've already been selected through a bid process. They're not required to bid to work out to you, as you know that. What they're required to do is, is to go out. They're buying the job from us. It's basically a turnkey job. Uh, we want them to go out and bring the lowest prices back. But we already got somebody to estimate the draw for us. We know what it costs. We're not paying more than the job costs. We, that's called a, so we have a price for the first project. We know what it is. And we're not paying more than that. What we want the contractor to do is, is to go out and do what we tell him or her to do. In this case, go out and, and hire small and minority contractors. It's pretty simple. Uh, we get all the forms. I get all the forms. And it's pretty simple. And uh, we get all the numbers, we have all the bids, and we don't have to sign the contract because uh, uh, no one's on the take. And no one's in anyone's pocket because I don't really give a about any of them, uh, uh, I mean, at this age. So I think we have that leverage. I'm not trying to get rich. I don't need that money. I'm not taking any money. What I need to do is just do the right thing and help people get work. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's no more, it's no more, I once had a boss and I kept saying this, and they kept saying that, and, but they couldn't understand that one thing, all I wanted to do was the right thing. And it was so alien to them, they, they was like, you must want something out of this process. And I kept saying no, and they was like, you must want something. And I kept saying no, but they couldn't grasp for two years that I didn't want anything, so we had to support ways. 
So the concept is I don't really want anything out of this process other than the fact that I can assist people with, with, the, with the position I have and not muck it up. And not you muck it up when I give you an opportunity, uh, right? Like getting lost all over Westchester County. <laughs> I'm only kidding. We, I'm only kidding. He was an excellent navigator. And we, found, we found our way, yes. Yes, we did. When will the uh, One has already been done. One got approved yesterday at the board meeting. And we're bringing in the other three next week to negotiate. Can you share the ones that got approved? Uh, one that got already selected was Tricon. I said, most of you probably know Tricon. It has been already firm. Uh, the one that got selected yesterday was Giordano Construction. You mostly probably know him. They've been around for as the grandpa and great grandpa, and and then there's a little Giordana running around. <laughs> for uh, uh, Tricon is uh, the projects are complicated because they're not one project. The first group is four projects, and it's Tricon, and there's um, Constant Bacon Motley, and Catherine Harvey, and Newhall Gardens, and Prescott Bush. They're all senior properties, so that's the first set of projects. And that's 144 units, and uh, hard costs is about $7 million. And that's, those are all rehabs. The second contract is Giordano, that is Valley, and Fulton Park, and Stanley Justice, and that's 71 units, and that's about $10 million. So, and they were approved yesterday. And they do have a minority, uh, what's the word, um, general partner in the deal, which we're very happy about. Who is it? I can't, Safi, yes. I'm glad you pronounced that name and not me. <laughs> One more time. And that's, as anyone knows, that is a long way for this firm to come, right? Uh, but they were on, they understood what they needed to do. And I'm glad they did it. And they're a 50-50 a, a partner all the way down the road. So that's an opportunity there. They have a minority contractor, a minority partner, not just a contractor, okay? So you can make your own contacts, you can call around, but that's an excellent opportunity there. Uh, so that's the second group. The third group is going to be uh, two, pro two properties. Uh, it's going to be Fairmont and Rupolo. And uh, we have the contractor's name but we're waiting on him to give us an MBEWB plan that we can be satisfied with, and that has not been done yet, so I'm not at a liberty to name that contractor, but it is a contractor we're all familiar with. We just want him to give us a robust plan that is meaningful and not one that's not meaningful. So that will probably happen next week for Fire Mountain Rupolo. Most of you know what Fire Mountain is, Rupolo. So that's contractor number three. Number four is two more projects, Salentano and Robert T. Wolf. And that's, uh, you know, most of you know those. So that's contractor number four. And number five is McQueenie. So those are your five construction managers. And then we have the, the big one, which is going to be Valley, which is going to be new construction. And uh, we don't know who that is yet because we haven't even put it out to uh, bid yet. And then Westville Manor, we don't know who that's going to be. It's going to be a, a new construction as well, and that has not been put out to bid yet. And then that will pretty much be in Howling Third's entire portfolio. That is it. Everything would have been converted except for Crawford Manor and McConaughey. There will be no more public housing as we know it in New Haven because it would have all been converted. It's all going to be project-based project -based assistance. So, that's the, that, so those are the opportunities. And that January, February, March, and April is when the construction is going to start. Um, we have an upcoming um, program in September. By that time, all of the GCs and CMs who have been selected, what we're going to do is we're going to bring all of them in the same room um, so that we can um, you know, continue that dialogue. I know that most of them are going to try to do their own event, but we're going to try to bring all of them in the same room because the chances of all of us getting work with everybody in the same room, I think, is much higher. So check our um, website for the upcoming event in September, um, and that's going to be one of the main goals of doing so. And we did that before for Brookside. Remember, we brought every, face brought everyone into the room, and people got a lot of work, as many of you may know. That was about $200 million worth of work, and 
minorities got about $60 million of that work. We brought everybody in the room, not once, not twice, but multiple times over and over again, and that worked out well. So I think that's the other way we can do this. You can be in the room with them, you can make your own pitch, and we'll do that sooner rather than later, yeah. Yes, so we're gonna try to shoot that for um, September because by then they would have all been awarded. They would have come up with a plan on how they um, want to um, include participation of businesses in general, and we can see how we all do from there because I think with that respect, we can, the opportunities will be greater than all of them having individual um, events. So we'll be working on that part, yes. Because they're public bids, are we able as the contractors that potentially looking at it, are they allowed to see the CM bid? I believe if yeah, you, yeah, yes, they are placed at public, so you can request for, um, you can request to the housing authority to see the entire bid. However, once they've been awarded, who they bid the work out to is not public. That is at their own discretion. The housing authority can only encourage them to increase the participation with locals and uh, minorities and. You know, it just helps you to know if you're way off base one way or another. You can request in writing to the housing authority because it's public bid and in writing, they will, they will send that to you. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. You're using the term construction manager as opposed to general contractor. Is that purposeful? In other words, are the contracts actually held by the city themselves or are they held by what you're terming as a construction manager? With the construction manager, we have a GC, which we never use. Uh, I'm not sure why, but we don't. We do the construction manager because they are in effect become our partner from the beginning. So we bring them in at the beginning. We have the architect. So the team is the owner, the architect, and the construction manager. And they work on the schematic drawings and the design drawings and the construction drawings. And so all through the process, they're telling us what can and cannot be built. Because often we get something and we have a, the architect who somewhat clueless sometimes, they're good architects, but they're not, they don't know how to build anything. They design something, like they did with my road, and then we can't get the mechanical room system into the mechanical room. Then we got to put it in between the, right? It's a true story. And, we, and then the, the site, the building to fit on the site, so we had to lift the building up five feet. That's, and then we had to, the sewer line that ran to the end of the property, but it didn't connect anything because there were no sewer lines. So then we had to dig up well, my road, true story. So we bring the, we don't do a general contract because they're on the back end. We bring a CM in and then we negotiate with them and they throughout the process. So when the process is over and we get 90% drawings, we say, okay, you were here throughout the process. Give me your guaranteed maximum price contract uh, because you've seen everything and there will be no change orders. So, and then they will go out and then they will find their subs, 10, 11 or 12 of them, and that's where the push comes. They have stuff they already know from years and years and years. And then the question is, how do we break that cycle? Like you say, you can't get to have three years of experience until you've had one year of experience. And you can't get three until you had two years of experience. You can't get three until you had two years and a half. We are aware of that. So the question is, how do we break that cycle? How do we get how do we get people that first level of experience? And then that's bonding. The bonding's not a problem because they're already bonding the job. And I said, except for a few trades, we don't allow them to bond to, come, to have everybody do a bond. We don't need 20 bonds on the job. We don't need a bond for cabinets and flooring and painting. You know, we had to, you know, they were here with the painting department three or four times and it was like, she don't need to paint anymore. You should have been happy with the first second time. You need to give her a check. But we understand all those things. We've been doing this for 40 years, so the contractor understand what we want to do. We all have a good understanding. The question is, there's a lot of work done, and we don't need lip service. We just need to make the connections between you and them so you can avoid the pitfalls that they talked about. And then, and how do we get them not to hire the same person over and over and again? Because we're hiring them over and over and over and over and over again. That's already not very positive. We should have more than three contractors or five contractors to bid on this work, but we don't. And I don't even want to get into why, but that's a different issue. All we can control is, is having you come in and go down and tell them that you're a painter. And Mr. Miller said, you're painting 144 apartments, and I got this month's experience. And then 
I, I can do the job and I can do it well and I can do it within the, what the price that you already gave him and 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 that's pretty much it. Uh, they have nothing to lose uh, other than the fact that they need you to do the job well and do it once because if you have to do it over and over and over again, they're losing their profits. So that's their job. It's their profit and their overhead and their general conditions and they need to get the project done as fast as they can because they make money by doing the job in 10 months rather than 12. If you're taking time and making it 13 months, they're not happy. So that's the real, that's the real you know, yin and yang of it. They make money. The profit is 6%. They built me 6% for overhead, and the overhead says they're gonna do the job for 13 months. If they do it in six months, they save a lot of money on insurance, right? And on the trailer, right? And on all that stuff. That's where they make the money. So they can't have you doing the job over and over and over again. So we can make the marriages, we can bring everybody in the room, we'll do that in August and September, and then you can see what you can do. And I said, that worked out very well at Brookside, and it can work out well here. Sorry, one more thing. I just wanted to add something before I forget. Also, one of the things I noticed about the RFPs for general contractor CM with the housing is that the CM is only allowed to perform no more than 25% of the total contract. So they are required to subcontract 75%. And that's another reason for, you know, whether it makes a difference between self-performing everything and being encouraged to subcontract the other 75% to everyone. So just like, as he was saying, let's say you got 144 apartments and you don't feel comfortable with doing 144, you go to the GC and say, hey, could you give me 30? And he may say, yeah, okay, I'll give you 30. You perform on those 30, the next time around, he realizes, hey, I did that. Maybe you can do 60 apartments now. So, I mean, that way, well, don't that's tell me what- you can do 30, 32, <laughs> and you're gonna do 29. But, well, but, but right. that worked, yeah. right, but that, that works because then he, you know, you build a relationship yeah. and you never know from that point forward. The other thing you can do is, and I think um, you um, talked as, as that question a little while ago, is on the CM and GC level is a competitive bid, out to bid. You have to realize that after that process, it becomes negotiations. So if you're not sure before you turn your price in, you should call that GC or CM and say, can we have a one-on-one -on -one meeting? And at that time, that's when you can you know, have a chance to discuss. Ask about their budget. Don't say yes without realizing you can actually do for that budget. But after it's been put out to bid, everything is negotiable. So I think people think when a GC asks you for a price, you just send the price. Sometimes you might scare them with the price that you send. What you do is you ask to have a one-on-one -on -one with them so you can talk about and negotiate the pricing. And that also help a long way in terms of getting the work. Call this gentleman up, seriously. He's uh, estimating. Right, because I had one contractor come in, a minority contractor, and he was doing Walmart Road, and he was doing drywall in 47 apartments. So I was like, I'm busy, but I went home one night, I took out the calculator, and I was like, this, this thing is like, you know, so I calculated all the square footage of all the drywalls, and it was like a million dollars and something. <laughs> right, true story, remember? So I called up the contractor, and I was like, it was like $60,000. <laughs> so I said, I'm not an estimator, but I, and I would look online, and drywall was this much. And, and I called the contractor in, and I said, you can't do the job for $60,000, right? And the, and the CM was going to let him do it for $60,000. So I called the CM in, and I said, you can't have this person do this job for $60,000? So... I sat down with the CM, and we negotiated a deal, true story, and he did the draw for a half a million bucks. But it would have cost him $300,000 to buy all the material. Because what would have happened in that case if uh, Mr. Miller didn't intervene is two things. One, the CM would have given the subcontractor a draw for $60,000. One week into the job, he would have realized that he's gonna lose his shirt. And guess what's gonna happen? CM take the job away from them and self perform the whole work. They do that, they do that on purpose a lot. They will give you yes. a job knowing that you don't have a clue what you're talking about. And then call me up three weeks later and say, uh, I got to get rid of the, the sub. So no. those are all the games that we're aware of. But you need to make sure that you, that if you say you're going to paint this apartment, we know what a complicated apartment. You need, and I can't end up being in every job. I end up being in this job because the person called up V and says, I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy, I'm like three weeks into the job and I already spent 
$6,000 already. <laughs> so, but I think the networking and team working is that you can't be afraid to reach out to people with expertise. You're better off paying the estimator two or three or $4,000 to estimate for you than to do a painting job for one tenth of what it's worth. No, he can't guarantee you that. I don't guarantee that or anything. I guarantee them my good looks and that's it. <laughs> so, no, but I do have liability insurance and if I really muck up, they will, they will sue me and I'm assuming he has professional liability insurance as well. So we do have professional liability insurance and, and it's hard to get your hands on and I suspect if I were to muck up one time, I can't get in the job without my liability insurance, right? That, the, but the bottom line becomes, the, the fair answer to that question is, how much profit do you want to make? Somebody wants to make 20% profit, and another guy has got 5% profit. You know, well, you don't know, but you do know going in that you don't have a chance. So you got to pay me. That's not my problem. That's your problem because you want to make that much more profit. Some people work on a much closer margin. What if you have multiple? Um, in my case, the answer is absolutely yes. I only give them what they want. I ask them what their labor rate is, how they want me to figure a job out. I hand it to them. What they do with it after that, not my responsibility. And that's what makes the difference between um, the, the, the lowest competitive bidder or more. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. This job, so I understand the wage rate on this, is, is this a mix between public and private? No, no, no. no. all... These are David's Bacon. David's Bacon. Right. We always good question. They're all, just uh, uh, these are publicly assisted jobs, uh, uh, and they're all David's Bacon. And then we get into the residential versus the, you know, high rises, and we get people that, that give us a, a rate for, you know, the low rise rate, which is completely different than the high rise rate, and then they go broke. Uh, the late, all the workers call up and say, I'm supposed to be paying Thirty dollars an hour, because a lot of contracts don't know that. At at at, well, for stories, it's a different rate, right? Completely different rate. So you need to know that. So if you're bidding a job, you need to know that. Uh, for stories in below one rate, uh, for stories and above a totally different rate. You know, big difference, huge difference. So all those little things you have to know. Uh, you cannot. Uh, we get jobs that I had a job last week, fourteen percent, fourteen percent, fourteen percent, and then one person said to head with it. He bid 10%. 10% of, of $30 million is better than 0% of $30 million. Would you agree? So, and one bidder came in at 9% and 10%, 9%. And then we asked for the final best amount of offers, and he came back in at 14. I can't fathom why they would do that, why you would come in with the best and final hire. But we get all that stuff going on. So I, I encourage everyone, we, we and I talk about it all the time. Go out and find someone with expertise to help you do your cost estimating. Uh, otherwise, you'll be running around, hanging outside the housing authority at 7, 8, 30 in the morning saying, true story, I, I got this job uh, for cabinets, like one minority contractor did, and I'm going to pay 150 for the cabinet. The host of your cabinets are 750. Remember that one? Yes. So these are all real stories. 750 is what the HUD cabinets cost, not 150. You should ask somebody what they cost because 150, you got to buy them uh, for 350. That means I'm losing $200 on every single job. That contractor came in, we called the contractor in, but we can't call in every contractor and negotiate for you. You're supposed to negotiate for yourself. One of the things that I realized in business, and all of us are in business for different trades, there's places you can save money. You know? So, for example, you can lower your profit margin when it's in the millions. But there's places where you, you can't afford to be cheap. End of story. You can't afford to be cheap about it. So don't be cheap about estimating the cost. You might be a great painter or a great carpenter, but if you don't have the time to check on the prices, meaning pick up the phone and call the supply house and check on all of these prices, hire someone else to do it for you because you can't afford to not bid the role. I mean, all, most of us here are contractors, and yes, at one point or the other, we may have under bid, <laughs> or bits are <laughs> equal. But you do, you make those mistakes once or twice, you don't make it all of the time. So it's important that in certain areas, you, you get the professionals to help you if you don't have the time, because your time as a subcontractor 
maybe out there doing the work itself. I also wanted to say very quickly that um, in addition to um, putting together and you know that we, it's something we're going to start doing now, meaning like next week, reaching out to all of the um, awarded GCs and CMs and even reaching out to their partners so that we can get them all in the same room so we can all come back and do again this Q&A and see how we can get involved in that project because you know, we're hoping that by September we're talking about six, why right, is five, right? Five, okay. Yeah, five, five, five construction managers slash GCs. And unless you really don't know what you're doing, I don't see how if you're qualified, you won't get the opportunity to do some of the work. So we're going to work on that respective part. So please look out on our website to see when that is coming up. Uh, go ahead. I, I also find the biggest problem that any contractor has, and I learned this from doing this many, many years, there's never enough hours on the job. So the biggest problem that I've had with contractors, they'll say to me, figure them a job. Let's say there's 250 linear feet of wall that have to be framed. So I say to them, how many, how many, how many linear feet can your men do in a day? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, how can I give you a budget figure to, to figure out how much it's going to take to frame that wall? And I think that's the biggest downfall of contractors. They have no clue as to how much work their men can do in a day. And I would say to you, when in doubt, you underestimate because there's never enough hours in the job. Never. And that's where you get burned. Okay, you go on the assumptions you're doing 150 linear feet of wall in a day. Next thing you know, you've only done 75. Now you're already down 75 feet going into the next day. And then that snowballs. And then you get behind, and then voila, that's when you get in trouble. It's very true. And that's really in every trade. Not yes. experience with Brookside. That's how I learned to do my own work. I went, the, you know, with the Mr. What you call it? Um, George. And then they finagled. Yeah, they, car, they finagled. And I went in and I started to work because I wanted to get experience. And that's how I got the 77 units in Rockville. <laughs> but what a lot of people don't realize that is that the rates change every June. The rates change. So when you go into the job and you give in the old rates, you don't realize that the June the new rates are coming. So you got to put the implement the new rates in your in your packet. And when you're working in the millions, every single cent counts. <laughs> so yes, and that's the other thing. You know, I mean, maybe um, you know even Vase can do a little bit bit better of a job to. Um, keep a brace of um, our network, what is coming up, what is changing, what you have to look out for, and hopefully that can also help um, in the future. Yes? The GC slash CMs put their initial bid in, and they, in that bid, you had stated earlier, they have to come through with a, a plan of how they're going to work with certain minorities. Mm -hmm. What I was wondering is, because I've seen this in a lot of state bids, that we'll put a bid in, they'll use our number, they'll say they're using us, then they get the job, and then they rebid it again. Are you making sure that if they submit something with that contractor that they're going to continue to use? Uh, that's a form that they fill out that says uh, these are my percentages, which are given to them by the city and the housing authority, and then they list their, uh, their subs. And then there's no uh, sleight of hand or shell game. Uh, this, is not, this is not a game. This is a real thing where we really do expect them to keep their commitments, spread out the work, and get the work done. Uh, we truly expect them to do that. But more importantly, they truly know that we expect them to do this. So there's no bridge here. We, they know that I expect them to do this. And so that's the real part of it. They know I expect them to do what I tell them to do. And they know I don't expect them to have a co contractor that's a dummy contractor. That's a flow through. I get flow throughs. They come in. I had a subcontractor, minority contractor, I brought him in, and he was flowing all the contractor back out to another contractor in uh, in, in another town. Eighty five percent of the work was being flowed back out. So I says, "Who are you flowing this work out back to?" And he said, "This other contractor." I said, "Where did he come from?" He said, "From the come from the construction manager." So I was like, "That's no, we don't. That's not. So it's a, it's not a game. This is like we need to get the work done." Contract, he needs to get it done. 
these rules and regulations are there. They're supposed to hire small businesses and local businesses and minority businesses and women and residents. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And these are numbers. It says numbers is 25% and 20%. It's, this is not rocket science. You take $10 million, you divide by 25%, you get $2.5 million. I expect to see $2.5 million on, on a page somewhere. It's not rocket science. I, you know, it's not that complicated. We don't expect to see one million. Uh, we don't expect to see whatever. And we don't expect to see one country to get all of it either. We expect for it. I mean, I could directly hire one contractor, that's a minority contractor, a uh, small contractor, and give him or her all the work. But that's not what we expect, too. We expect, if you, even if you hire a minority contractor to be your partner, we expect that minority contractor to hire other contractors as well. So this is not all, it's all those games that people are pretty much understand. They're not that complicated. But we need to just make the relationship between you and the contractors. We have five contractor managers, and we have $150 million worth of work, and work's going to start in January. So we can make the relationships, have you make the phone calls, uh, and have you go see them like this young man did, and, and then make and have the conversation, and then you're on your own, like the young lady here, and then you can go from doing whatever she was doing, which is, I don't remember, it wasn't much. Oh, yeah. To, 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 a lot now, though, exactly. Well, I'm just handling now. I yeah. mean, I knew the trick. I had to go when I did Brookside. Yeah. That was not mine, but I wanted to get the feel of what had to be done. So that's pretty simple. We want somebody you know, to. I did schools. I could do the schools. I did a part of um, Helen Grant. So that's. Because I did not know how to do it. So what I did, I linked up with a, a GC, and they love me. <laughs> so that's pretty simple. Go in and learn it because it looks simple, but it's not. So it's a lot of little nitty gritty you have to do, and you can't do. Don't go in there thinking you're gonna do a hundred because that don't work. I think one of the things that all of us learned at the very beginning in our construction career is that doing private work is very different from doing government work. You know, government work is. Um, so much involved that your price can be the same as doing private work. It's one thing if a homeowner hires you to come and do a job for them. That's all they want, come do the job for them. When it comes to government, you have to factor all of these things in, the prevailing wage, bond, insurance, bond, all of those have to be factored in. So, and you know, Claudette is a perfect example because you know, when she doesn't know, she asks the question. Um, I mean, she sends the email at one in the morning, but you know what, that's okay. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> But that's what you have to do. You know, we do the same thing. When we have questions, we ask. <laughs> and it's important because we have to help each other. That's the only way that we can't be afraid to you know, go and get the help. So yes, the, those of us that do ask for help and do work together, that's why we're still in business. And now that we have this billions, not millions, billions of dollars worth of work coming up in the pipeline, now in the, into the next seven years, you know, seven years from now, if all of you guys here that do qualify don't get a piece of that work, I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. You know, so part of what we're doing here is figuring out how how we're gonna do it. Yes. Okay, because we have two we have time for two more questions. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you both for doing this because I've been in business 32 years and I've never come across a project that all the typical things that eliminate smaller and minority companies, you took care of the insurance, the bonding, all these things. Oh, you took care of the insurance, the bonding, and all that. So now the excuse that everyone's always said is, oh, we don't get the opportunity. So now it's up to you to perform, but this is a fantastic opportunity. I mean, there's no excuse for you not to succeed. You've eliminated, you, you've eliminated all, the, all the typical barriers, and I want to thank you both for that. I did want to mention one quick thing. One of the, as you guys, many of you guys know, that we opened a second location in New Haven. We did that for a couple of reasons. One was to become competitive advantage. We know that all of the businesses are coming to, um, all of the opportunities are coming to New Haven. With that being said, when we opened up the office, we had a couple of things in consideration or in mind. Was we opened it because we saw all of the billions of dollars of work coming in New Haven. We wanted to be local. But we also designed the office um, so we call the shared office space or a co-working space. So for those of you that are trying to also expand, if you do want to expand into New Haven, 
join us, you know, work in our co-working space, have the address, be local, so that we can all take part and work together and, on, and uh, potentially be able to do work in the New Haven coming up. So I just wanted to touch base on that, okay? One of the things I want so. to bring to, to, to work is when you're working with the housing authority, there's a lot of trick to it. I'm gonna let you all know this. Once you finish that apartment, Take you picture. bring in the GC and let him see if you're done and you give him that key. That way, anything after, you get paid for. Okay, that's a good one for those of you that don't know. Take pictures and hold up the day in the newspaper. That's what I do. Because they're gonna say, you didn't do <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to speak on uh, on the uh, uh, vase co-working space. Um, the, the, as far as uh, what I've never seen a place, you hear a lot of rhetoric. You hear people talking the talk, but the this is where the rubber meets the road. This particular space is beautifully decorated by uh, with adorned with um, paintings from local New Haven artists. It's like an art. It's an art gallery. There are several workspaces within the uh, facility. It is in a revitalized neighborhood in New Haven where these townhouses are beautiful townhouses. The neighborhood itself is making a comeback. Vase has invested in the neighborhood because they believe in the neighborhood. We are uh, very proud. I'm very proud to be a member of Vase for two years in management. Uh, uh, as far as uh, networking. And to me, you can hear people talking all the time, but never doing. This is where the, uh, V put her money where her, her mouth is. She's invested. So all I would say is to, to any of you contractors who are looking for a satellite office, it's very reasonable. It's only $10 for an hour. There's a plotter. There's fax machines, there's um, printers, there's uh, the greatest Wi-Fi, air conditioning, beautifully decorated facility with windows. How many of you worked in offices that didn't have any windows? You got windows. You could sit and look outside a window. So I just encourage you, all of you, I love the place. I use it for my own personal um, uh, business that I run and also um, for Anything that I, anytime I need to jump on uh, a Wi-Fi quick with my laptop, it's very convenient right from Middletown. I stop there sometimes at night, and it's a great place to come. So please give it a visit, and hopefully you'll agree with what I'm saying. It is a beautiful space, and it's very well done. Congratulations, V. I swear I did not pay him to say that. <laughs> we love John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Actually, we had an, another member um, that um, signed up yesterday at the co-working space. You know, it's what I found was, was very effective for price. It's just excellent space. And there's times that what happened yesterday. I have a customer that I needed to get an invoice. By the time I got back to my office and back, I wouldn't have got it done. But I was able to do it and get it, and it's convenient. And, and the price is completely, completely. Affordable. I mean, I, I would have spent more time yesterday running to a Staples yeah. than what I'm going to pay you. And then you have the monthly and the annual fees. One of the things that you guys have, and I think I say it at every event, is you know, we're not like your usual um, membership organization, and that's why we're private, so you can choose to join us or not join us, it's okay. But one of the things that I think is important to know that we, are, we have three divisions. We are general contractors as well. You know? So not only do we run this organization to help you, because when you guys do well, we do well. I mean, how many of you guys here have we worked with before? I see a few of you guys say that we've worked with, meaning that dollar transactions amount us. So when you do well, we do well. But at the same time, as general contractors, we understand some of the struggles that many of you are going through because we go through. But more importantly, you know, with all of the billions of dollars worth of work that's coming up in New Haven, don't get me wrong, selfishly, we want to get some of it. So you know, we're not here just for you, we're here for us too. So all I can say is I can give you work, you know, any more than like the housing authority can give you work. We can present opportunities. When we are going into these projects, we're going in for ourselves. We're just opening up our doors so you can come and join us because billions of dollars worth of work, we can't do it alone. You should be able to do it. But understand that this program is like the gym, and I say that people laugh at me sometimes. You get what you put into it. People use the word networking very loosely, but I can tell you some of the largest account we have is due to these kind of networking events. 
we are working for Yale University. How did that happen? Because I don't even remember when, but they showed up at one of these networking meetings. I don't remember, I spoke to them. The next thing, we got invited. Next thing we know, we don't work for Yale. New Haven Housing, for 10 years or more, we've been working with them. How did that happen? We did a networking event at Mohegan Sun. They showed up, I met with Karen, I met with Jimmy, next thing I knew, we were doing work for New Haven Housing. Same thing for the town of Fairfield. Don't underestimate networking. You know, don't think you can sit in your house and you know, do work and work is gonna come to you. We all have to work for it. But I think the significance of VASE is that we are also trying to achieve what you are trying to achieve. You know, just like you, we're, we're small. We're not a major contractor. We're trying to get to that point. So when we started here, we said, how are we gonna get there? How do we get there? Hopefully, we can share. Uh, I mean, we can, we can find a way to get there together. Um, you know, we've grown, I won't lie, since we started, we've learned a lot, we've grown a lot, and we're still growing, but the sky is the limit. So hopefully um, all of us can um, prosper together in the future. Yes. <laughs> okay, hey, <mate. laughs> Hi, Tom. One more V co commercial. V is also on my board of directors at Minority Business Association. I just want you to know, we're on. The, we're ready to do thirty million dollars worth of work on the east end of Bridgeport. Okay, our work is going to go through the Minority Business Association, the East End NRZ, the East End Community Council, anybody that's affiliated with us, including our board member v, v from Vase. We don't get into a lot of competitive bidding for our stuff because we've broken that mold. If you are a member of these organizations, you will get preferential treatment. I can't say it any plainer than that because we're not looking for the man that comes or the woman that comes to our door trying to do a $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 dollars job for peanuts. We don't even want to talk to them because we know they can't do it. We're going to kick them up the ladder a little bit to somebody that can help them to do that. V is your portal into everything that we're going to do on the East End. Yes, one more question. So there's a, another project, to, was it about a year ago, a year and a half ago, this networking meeting was held in Ansonia. And the Ansonia Housing Authority uh, leader, the uh, director was there at the meeting, he spoke about the opportunities. And at that particular meeting, some alliances or conversations were had which resulted in uh, work for members of VASE. Exactly, exactly. So these meetings have a, have a tendency, and there's no promises made. It's, it's like a date, you, let's say a blind date, but then there's no guarantees that after that you're gonna get a second date. So V makes no guarantees, but she, at least she puts you in the room with the decision makers so you can find out like tonight, perfect example. So out of that meeting, about a, uh, a year later, big huge project uh, that happened in Ansonia which many of the members of this organization were involved in so I, I believe there's a connection to coming to this meeting and getting work yes and that happens a lot I th actually I just remember that project because um, we were the construction managers for the phase one and two of the Riverside apartment demolition in Ansonia and as construction managers we were looking and we were saying you know um, you haven't met your goals so what you gonna do? Well, we happen to have a networking event coming up. It's a bunch of minority firms, small firms, local firms. Clearly, you can find one or two qualified ones. So I think it was standard demolition. That was phase two. So they came to one of our networking events, and as a result of that, I don't know, no, he's not here. But as a result of that, there were two firms in Bridgeport that came to the event. They are actually also VASE members. That was selected. Another firm that came, and altogether they selected four, um, four firms out of these networking meetings, their total contract was about $600,000 combined, not, in the, not single, but combined. So the power of the face-to-face -face meeting is, you know, you, you can underestimate that. Um, it, it may take, you know, we say, we do these things now once every two months. Taking two or three hours out of your one, tw once every two months to get potential work opportunities 
I mean, I think it's worth it. We get business of that, so we hope that you think the same way. So thank you for reminding us. And that happens all of the time. Even we've we've had, um, last year we did a networking event once every month, and every month we had uh, either an agency or major contractor or general contractor that came and shared opportunities. I will, I think I won't be speaking out of conscience if I say that a minimum of at least one contract was made out of every single meeting that we had. So you can't estimate. I can't guarantee that every one of you guys can get work um, because of this program, because one, we're not God, and two, we can't make anybody you know, do anything that they don't want to do, and three, all we do is present opportunities. We can't guarantee you work. But I believe that if you present yourself in the best manner and you are qualified, there's no reason why the opportunity, when they present it to you, you cannot get work out of it. You bring the horse to the, wa to the water, but you can't let him drink. You can bring the horse to the water, but you cannot make him drink. You have to work hard for it. So with that being said, um, just to leave you with three things. Between now and, I don't know what the date is. I think um, uh, James and Matt may remind. By the way, James and Matt, say hi. <laughs> so with all of the opportunities coming up in, in, in the state, in New Haven, in the Fairfield County, we just couldn't keep up with it anymore. So we brought on board the VACE team, um, James and Matt, to help us to, one, get the message across with upcoming opportunities, understand what your needs are, and see how we can help you. Like Jimmy said, you, know, you can help sometimes you know, major contractors play games, but you can help the ones that you know. You know so you may not be able to help other agencies, but if you do a job in New Haven, say, or Milford, or any of the, program, any of the agencies that are involved with us, and you feel you're not being treated fairly, you can always come to us and we can help you, as long as they are one in our program. But it's becoming to be a little bit too much, so James and Matt just join on board to help us all do better. So I just wanted to introduce them. Thank you guys for coming on board. <laughs> Um, with that being said, mark your, um, check out our calendar. The upcoming event in September is going to be very crucial because the concept is to bring all of the general contractors and the, major, and the uh, construction managers that have been awarded these five projects. We're also going to invite um, some other um, major contractors in the nearby cities that are working on major projects. Um, we just got awarded, I think, where's Robert? Hey, Robert. Robert is our construction manager. We just got awarded um, the construction management position for the city of Milford. They're going to be putting up, it's not big, it's small, small jobs, but uh, you know, it's quite a bit that's coming up. And they're going to be looking for subcontractors to do the work. Uh, you know, as construction managers, we have no bias, you know, like Jimmy said in, in his position. You know, we don't take any money, so we just manage and see things being fair. So when we see the opportunities, we just let you guys know. But yeah, the city of Milford in their 2017-18 budget is a lot of a lot of opportunities. So keep up for that. Um, Fairfield too. So there's a lot of projects that's coming up. So keep abreast with our website and just you know start paying attention to the phone calls that you may get from Matt and James so that you don't miss out on anything. Um, before, because um, we only have a few more minutes left, before I um, go into the raffles, I just want to say, one, thank you guys so much for taking the time to come, and two, let's give a hand of applause to Mr. Miller for um, coming and helping us today. Uh, with that being said, let's do the raffle really quickly. <laughs> Matt, can you help? Thanks. So we have three, three raffles. We have a champagne, we have a vest, and we have a half 50% of the VASE membership. Um, so for, sub, for subcontractors, it's $800 per year or $80 per month. For general contractors, it's I think one, I'm sorry, James and Matt will help. I don't remember the prices. <laughs> $195 for general contractors and, and $250 for government agencies. The you can do either. You get 20% off if you buy it for the whole year. Is this the first winner? Yeah, the first winner is going to be a champagne. Depends on who it is and if, they, if they're going to let you do that. John Campbell. You get the champagne. Isn't that true? What's up with that? Don't make him feel bad. <laughs> 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 
card. Don't play here, participate. They have the right business card. The second, the, the second one is going to be the, um, the vase vest. Who is it? Stephen No. Stephen No. Hi. He wins the vase vest. I know a few people came in after the event, including Can we get him. Two vests for one champagne? Can we get a you really want that champagne? I need that champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay. I'm only kidding. I'm sorry? I'm, no, I'm, only, I'm only kidding. I, I like that. You know what, Mr. Miller? We will make sure you get a champagne. No, I don't need it. I don't want to play. The room have spoken. <laughs> And the last, the last gift is 50% of the VASE membership. So if you're already new, if you're renewing, just keep that in mind. You get 50% off. Did you put Jarvis Page in and you give me your name? No. No? J? Total Energy Connection? Where? Oh, the roofing guy. <laughs> he, the energy guy. Yeah, but he kept asking about the roof. He's got friends, he says. Okay. <laughs> there you go. We have, you have a credit for that, so that's $400. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much again for coming. Um, reach out to our office anytime. Follow the website and see when the next meeting is coming up because that's going to be very crucial. We have about 20 to half an hour more. We're going to end this so we can do some more networking. And um, thank you. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We have to say a quick thank you to DJ Kinsley. <laughs> and AVP, Brian, thank you so much.